Welcome back to Tipping Point. I'm your host, Kara McKinney. A hung jury forces a mistrial in the case of the Arizona rancher accused of murdering an illegal alien on his property near the U.S.-Mexico border. One of the attorneys for the rancher who argues to have been acting in self-defense told local news that seven of the jurors wanted to acquit George Allen Kelly, while only one wanted to convict him of the charges, as jury deliberations lasted from last week until yesterday on Monday. Watch. Can you tell us one more time, what, what was the count and what do you think the message is that sends to the uh, prosecution? There was one holdout for guilt. The rest were not guilty. So it was seven not guilty, one guilty. And that message should be, you try it again, and maybe this time we will have all fair jurors that follow the law. And again, that's why you were holding out to keep going. Yes, because we believe in our gut that there was no way the state proved beyond a reasonable doubt. The 75-year-old rancher has been facing hell for more than a year at this point. He lives close to the border on 170 acres where there is no one coming to your rescue if things go awry. This is a very important dynamic for people to understand when discussing his case. Prosecutors are claiming that Kelly spotted two unarmed illegal aliens on his property and that without any kind of warning, shot at them with his AK, striking one of them fatally in the back. But the defense argues that that's not what happened at all. They say Kelly instead spotted multiple illegal aliens who he believed to have been armed with rifles and who he also suspected to have been involved with the cartels, given their gear and backpacks. And so he fired off warning shots above their heads to tell them to keep it moving, essentially, not to cause any trouble. He was in regular touch with law enforcement and Border Patrol, and upon initial investigation after the incident, Kelly didn't see any illegals, dead or alive, still on his property. It wasn't until hours later that he says his dog or some other animal happened upon a corpse. Since no bullet was recovered from the body, Kelly's lawyers argue it's possible that the illegals may have killed the Mexican national who had been deported from the U.S. in the past and then left his body on the property for an unrelated reason. Though the illegal who the decedent was traveling with claims they were not smuggling anything like drugs or weapons on their journey were trying to be peaceful. We really just don't know at this point, hence why the defense attorney said what she did in that soundbite we just watched a moment ago. She also claims that since law enforcement zeroed in on Kelly, that means other explanations for the death were not given proper consideration or investigation. Joining us now to discuss is Julie Harris, the president of the National Federation of Republican Women. Julie, thanks for being here tonight. Thank you. Great. So the border is one of the main areas of focus your group finds to be most important this election cycle, along with foreign policy and the economy. So hearing the story of the cattle rancher, does it further drive home the point that we don't know who's crossing the border and what their intentions are? That's right. And I, my heart goes out to this rancher. We can't say for sure what happened. Um, what I can tell you is that some of our members in Texas have reported back that on their property, they have had at one time 10 Syrians on their property and the local sheriff was able to apprehend five while five got away. And so I can only imagine the fear in these folks living on the border, not knowing who's coming across. We know that there's been a huge increase in Chinese uh, illegal crossings on the border, um, as well as, unfortunately, 400,000, up to 400,000 children have either been trafficked or smuggled across the border. It's a humanitarian crisis. It's a national uh, security crisis. And it's a local security crisis for these individuals living on the border. You know, and it really is so scary, like you said. I know Breitbart, you know, for the last decade or more has done a great job uh, reporting on a lot of these even smaller stories that just don't get national attention. And it usually is ranchers and, you know, others in the area with property along the border. And they'll find, you know, deceased migrants, you know, those who either just died because of exposure to the elements or those. Unfortunately, there's been bodies of young women who have been found where they've been obviously sexually abused, obviously raped, many of them then murdered or left for dead. And so you just don't know who's walking around your property and you've got to try and tell them to leave. But again, like you said, is this guy a, a Syrian migrant who might have a bomb? We don't know. Is it a cartel guy who might blow your head off? Who knows? That's the scary part. And I think not enough people are, are recognizing just how dangerous this is. And so they want to cast too much hateful suspicion, I think, on the rancher. And they want to just dismiss all of his concerns. And again, like he's saying, he never shot at anybody. He did warning shots in the air, not at any single person. So that's why he's saying, how could he have hit somebody? When again, that's not what he was trying to do. Um, also, they had some text messages of him talking with some buddies saying that, you know, 
with so many, you know, illegals crossing through his property that his AK's been getting a, a lot of work in. And he was kind of joking, you know, that, that's how older guys joke, right? But what he meant is just, you know, brandishing to scare off people, not saying that he's going out and killing. But again, his text messages even showed that he's very aware of the danger when you have human smugglers, drug traffickers, weapon traffickers, and the rest waltzing all over. And again, you don't know who's who. But going back again to your organization, you know, you've just endorsed President Trump for this election cycle. And I guess I should say, you know, I guess I'll assume, right, that a lot of it has to do with a stance on the border. But talk to us about your decision making process on this. Yes, well, we endorsed President Trump um, as soon as he was the uh, obvious nominee, and we were very happy to do that. He has a proven record on the border. Uh, We know that he is the only one who can secure our border, uh, do a course correction with our country, and uh, turn our economy around. Our women, uh, 60,000 members, are motivated. They're motivated to save their country. In the last election, the midterm, we did about 14 million volunteer hours. We are positioned to do even more this election cycle. We have a history of getting our candidates elected. Uh, We did this for President Trump in 2016. Uh, We purchased a bus and drove around the country registering women to vote and um, getting out the vote. This year, we'll do it a little bit differently. You know, we have technology at our fingertips, but we will be out there knocking doors, making phone calls, putting in the hours, and we are committed to seeing President Trump get elected. So 60,000 or so members, that's a lot. And as also you were talking about, I think it's about 2 million campaign hours of work that you guys... 14. Oh, okay. 14 million. 14 million. <laughs> Amazing. See, big, huge numbers, exciting numbers. And I think also it's noted here that it's about $138 million. If you want to try and put that into, you know, a, a figure that we, a tangible figure that we can talk about in free campaign work for this election year cycle. So uh, before I let you go tonight again, can you once more kind of dive back into some of those details to perhaps, you know, encourage some women who may be watching right now how they can get involved, how they can get involved with your organization, helping out this election, anything else that they need to know about perhaps signing up for some volunteer work as well with you guys. Yeah. Um, If you want to help save your country, we ask you to join the NFRW, the National Federation of Republican Women. You can go to our website at at NFRW.org. There is a place on there to find a local club in your area. Our phone number is also on there. So if you can't find a local club, give us a call. We'll put you to work. We have an army of women who wear red who are going to be going out and winning this election for the Republicans. I love to hear that, Julie. Thanks for making time for us tonight. Thank you.